So recently, we decided to upgrade the TV in our living room and wanted to go with a wall-mounted stand. We went with the Holaki floating TV stand, which is around $230 from Amazon. I don't know if this product goes by any of her names, but if so, I will make the corrections in the video title and description as time goes on. It arrived decently packaged with number stickers on all the pieces, which helps speed up assembly since you don't have to sift through every piece for each step. Assembly is straightforward. There are a few minor errors in the instructions, but it should be obvious where the pieces should go. A side note, make sure you insert these grommets all the way down before starting to screw them in. If you don't, it will blow out as you see in this clip. The shortcomings with the stand start appearing once it comes time to mount it to the wall. The provided drywall anchors are a complete choke and pull right out the wall. There is absolutely zero grab. If you must use drywall anchors, which I don't recommend, I would look into buying something more heavy duty. Given the length of this stand, you should be able to hit a stud or two behind the wall. However, the problem is the stand only mounts in four predetermined locations with the provided brackets and clip holders. This may place the stand in a less than desirable location in your room. You must get your measurements exactly right or else you won't even be able to get the stand onto the wall. Also note, the mounting locations do not follow the standard 16 inch or 24 inch on center stud spacing that's found in most homes. Be prepared for the possibility of having to open the walls up and adding some horizontal blocking in order to get the stand exactly where you want it to be. In my case, I was lucky. Three out of the four mounts went into solid wood. The wall brackets are fine, but the clip holders aren't very good quality. Each has two screws. The bottom one extends the clip in and out, which helps you get the stand seated onto the wall brackets when they are fully extended out. Once seated on the wall, you could tighten the same screw to pull the unit closer to the wall for that flush look. But watch the rest of the video before you do that. The screw on top fine tunes the level left to right, but it doesn't go far in before the two plastic halves start separating as you can see here. Again, get your measurements right in the first place so that the stand is level to begin with and you don't have to resort to using these screws on top. They are in tight, cramped locations where your hands and screwdrivers won't easily fit in. I gave up on these screws and just ended up using some corner brackets while leveling the stand with a trolley jack. The biggest con would be there is no wire management except for the provided LEDs. Unless you don't plan on having any electronic devices in the cabinet, you are on your own. In my case, I decided to hide my wires behind these drawers since they don't reach all the way to the wall. I removed the useless panel all the way in the back and used a multi-tool to cut out the seating groove. This allows enough space to fit or fish through most cables. A big compromise here is that unless you run the TV wires through the wall, you will need to leave it between the cabinet and the wall itself. So earlier with the clip holders, if you didn't tighten them all the way down, it leaves a gap that's just enough room for the cables to pass by. The obvious drawback is that it won't look as clean and the stand won't be perfectly level front to back. If you want to run TV wires through the wall, look into a power bridge solution. In my case, since the TV was not much higher than the stand, I simply moved my soundbar over to cover most of the wires. After all is said and done, I noticed an immediate sag, which is noticeable, but I feel like all TV stands do this. I mean, it's just particle board. There are some scratches even in places that were covered by the factory protective tape. The right side drawer isn't aligned, even though the rails were mounted correctly. The screw holes could use some covers. The front trim pieces and drawers are a gloss finish, but the top is matte. I think they did this to reduce TV reflections, but my wife doesn't like it. She said it simply doesn't match. I know most of the video seems like I am criticizing the stand, but the reality is, for what it is, you aren't going to do much better for the price. The LEDs look simply amazing, and it really gives us the modern look we wanted without spending a fortune. The glass shelves are a nice touch they could have easily omitted, but didn't. If you are going for a minimalist look, this is a really really good option. I would buy it again. So here are my final thoughts. I would definitely recommend it, but more so for a specific type of person. If you are the type of person who does not mind doing some DIY drywall work or wire management, this is for you. For everyone else, be prepared to either pay someone to install for you or look elsewhere. If you found something useful in this video today, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.